our Justice Department and our FBI have to start doing their job and doing it right and doing it now. But at some point, if it doesn't straighten out properly, I want them to do their job. I will get involved and I'll get in there if I have to. This week, we learned even more details surrounding a brewing scandal we've been discussing for months, all surrounding the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, or FISA for short. Judicial Watch now has uncovered that no FISA court hearings, none, took place on the warrants obtained by the FBI on former Trump campaign associate Carter Page. There was never any court hearing on any of the Carter Page warrants. Uh, there was the initial warrant and then three subsequent renewals, and to me, it's astonishing and disturbing uh, that these courts couldn't bother to hold hearings on spy warrants targeting Donald Trump. When you look at these applications, it isn't about Carter Page. It's about the Trump campaign. It's about candidate number one, President Trump. Three of those warrants were filed while he was either going to be president or when he was president. And these courts that are supposed to provide oversight of the secret spy process refused to do so. And of course, they were gamed by relying on the Justice Department and the FBI. So you've got the uh, courts falling asleep at the wheel here. And of course, you got the underlying corruption of the DOJ and FBI. Of course, we know the basis for that warrant was Christopher Steele's dirty dossier. And the leadership of the Justice Department and FBI are completely uh, out to lunch in terms of highlighting and exposing and holding those accountable responsible for that corruption. I mean, it's a one-way court as it is. Right. It's an ex-party uh, proceeding, which means there's only one side, the government's side. And uh, there's nobody there to protect the civil liberties and the privacy rights that are being intruded upon by the federal government. These judges, without hearing, without asking a single solitary question, simply accepted as truthful the representations of people like James Comey, Andrew McCabe, Rod Rosenstein, Sally Yates. So now we know they weren't telling the truth. They were deliberately misrepresenting the facts. They were concealing vital evidence, deceiving the judges, and perpetrating a fraud on the court. This is what's wrong with secret star chambers. And it's, it's got to stop. It's got to be corrected in some form or fashion because the abuse of power now is rampant. And this is what happens. Well, and the concern is then when you author, when they actually put together that document, if they don't explicitly say or tell the judge that the Clinton campaign is funding this, right. you have to use a decoder ring to try to figure out. And then on top of that, for Judicial Watch to, to find out that there was no hearing. Yesterday, Catherine Harridge reported that current Mueller deputy Andrew Weissman was kept in the loop about Steele's dossier. Why is Weissman so important in what Bruce Orr was doing and in informing him along the way? Bruce Orr has now implicated the lead lawyer in Robert Mueller's special counsel team. He was in on the Russia hoax that was framing Donald Trump for doing things that Trump never did. So Weissman knew that Christopher Steele, who composed the phony dossier, uh, was not credible. They knew that the document was completely specious. It was unco uncorroborated, unverified. And they knew that Steele had been fired for lying. And yet the FBI and the Department of Justice and that guy on your screen apparently didn't care. They used it nevertheless to pursue this phony fabricated investigation of Donald Trump and to wiretap uh, an American citizen without proper evidence. So this now ruins the integrity and the credibility of Robert Mueller's special counsel. Weissman should be fired. And the special counsel himself should say, we apologize, we are terminating our special counsel probe because all of it has been tainted. And having Weissman heading up this, that's like a detective who frames a suspect, then appoints himself to investigate the crimes for which he has framed the suspect. Andrew Weissman is leading the investigation into Donald Trump, and yet it was Weissman who was involved in framing Donald Trump. The dossier was used by Mueller. That yeah. fourth renewal was signed during Mueller's reign. 
Mueller's responsible for the use of the dossier just as much as these others. Well, and that's where you start that's to get into Rod Rosenstein, there. too, who's got autographs on some of this stuff and the fire, the memo he authored in frame in, in firing of uh, Director Comey. It's so incestuous that it needs to continue to be exposed. Thanks for your great work, both of you. We really do appreciate it. Just imagine if the Republican Party had, uh, hired a foreign agent to go to Russia to get dirt on Hillary Clinton, and they used it to get a warrant and never told the court about it. Uh, it'd be front page story everywhere. That's pretty corrupt when the two FBI agent and the uh, uh, U.S. attorney, per, I mean the uh, DOJ lawyer, uh, it's our job to stop Trump. Can you imagine what would happen if it's our job to stop Clinton? Chris Steele had direct access to the FBI. He was handing them parts of the dossier. Why did they also want to run it through Bruce Orr at the Justice Department? Good question. Seems it seems uh, to me to create weight and credibility behind a document that was completely false. If you can now go tell the press and tell other people, oh, a senior Department of Justice official is also talking about the dossier and also passing it on to the FBI, it gives it weight when in fact it was completely a uncredible, unverified document and a bunch of garbage. Yeah. You know, you open the hour with uh, talking about the president saying he may have to get involved. The easiest way for him to get involved is to order the Justice Department and the FBI to quickly release these records, declassify the rest of those FISA applications that the court didn't hold hearings on so we can figure out what's in them, because they're, they're classified to cover up corruption, not because of national security issues, and get the truth out. That's the best way to combat the deep state at this point. What makes this so discomforting is that while the press should care and they should be exposing this because sunlight is the best disinfectant when you have something that is horribly diseased, but there's no sunshine on this other than from people like uh, Catherine Harridge and Sarah Carter, uh, people like Greg Jarrett. Otherwise, we would never know these things. But the other part of this is that at the highest levels of the FBI and the Department of Justice, there was an intentional effort to really stage what is no less than a coup d'etat against the elected president, and they were using taxpayer dollars to do it, and these are people with government jobs, and they're supposed to be upholding the law, and we ought to see a bunch of people frog-marched across federal property uh, under arrest for what they have done. It is just unbelievable that, th that this level of corruption exists among this many people at the top.